Hallelujah. Welcome to Bible study. You know, the Word of God is such pure knowledge to us. It is, it is what God wants us to know. It, it, it is what God actually un, has unveiled to us so that we can learn and understand who He really is. Uh, the Word of God has been given to men because that was the only source that God could give us so that we could live by something. You know, whenever God wants to show up in a relationship, He wants to tell something about Himself, the best way for him to tell himself is something that will last forever. And the word of God has been told to last forever. And with that, let's pray. Let's believe God. Let's learn from God. Father, we thank you for your grace, your goodness. Thank you for this opportunity that we can learn of you, that we may understand of you. Father, reveal your word to us so that it is an open book, Lord Father. Let your Holy Spirit move through our lives, Father, to teach us everything that you want to speak to us, Lord. That we may know everything that you are, have written in your word. That we may understand and perceive the directions of life, the wisdom and understanding that you grant us. Father, we thank you, Father, and we praise you and we receive it by faith. In Jesus' name, let us have it hearing ye, Lord Father and an open heart. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So if you've been with us, you know, we've been talking about the Bible. We've been learning a lot of things from the Bible. Uh, many things we have learned over, uh, and in recent times, recent weeks, we've been learning about the Holy Spirit. Uh, we had learned, you know, how how the purpose of the Holy Spirit had to come in, how important what is to set up, you know, there were things that were needed so that the setup for the Holy Spirit to come in was done. So uh, there were the times of what, what His mission was uh, and all those things that we connected and, and we established a lot of things, you know, how that, you know, without Christ dying and making us ready and available for the Holy Spirit, we could not have the opportunity to do so. Uh, our physical senses are unable to understand and receive of the Holy Spirit because he is a spirit God and he is supposed to be connected with our spirit. So with that, let, let, let's continue ahead and let's forge ahead in this. Is that what we need to now understand is what is the actual ministry of the Holy Spirit in this world right now? Okay, so Jesus, what he when he was on this earth, he taught his disciples this about the Holy Spirit. In the first moment when he starts talking about the Holy Spirit, he said, I, I'm going to go to my father and I'm going to pray to him to, for that you can find another helper. Okay, uh, in another word, it's written, I will send to you another comforter. Okay, so he, he, he was initially setting up and telling, you know what, I am here, I can do what I need to do, but I am limited to the body that I have, and that is why I need someone to actually do what I need to be done. So the, his whole idea is that I will send someone across, I will send across someone who is more than able to do what needs to be done. Okay, so so a lot of times, you know, people say, oh, it would have been good if Jesus was here. It would have been much more easier. It rather would not be. You know why? Because if Jesus found it more easier, he would have been here. But he is not. You know why? Because he has been localized in a body. He has chosen to give up his glorified person and chose to be living in this body. So he has glorified body, but he is at one place at a time. Whereas the Holy Spirit is able to, to connect with our spirits and he can connect with everyone's spirit. So that is why it is more, more, more beneficial for us that we have the Holy Spirit here who can teach us and show us and guide us instead of Jesus himself. Because the Holy Spirit is not going to try and do something else. Jesus even told the disciples, he said, you know, uh, he's not going to come and teach you something. No, no, I'm going to send him and he's going to teach you my words. He's going to teach you the very thing that I want to teach you. Okay, so... All throughout, so Christ comes out, you know, uh, at the resurrection and he goes about and he sets about this place. He He's actually setting up a place so that now he can entertain, now he can bring in the Holy Spirit into our lives so that he can do exactly what he needs to do. Let, let's look at John chapter 16 and verse 13. I'm reading here from the book of John, uh, book of John verse 16 and, and verses 13. So here Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says something. That's what we need to learn here. Okay, you got your Bibles. Turn over to John chapter 16 and let's read from verse 13 and 14. Okay, now he says here, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you the things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So the whole idea, the mission, that, that the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit here is to reveal what Jesus has done. 
Okay, so the whole ministry idea of the Holy Spirit right now, what he is doing throughout this world is to reveal what Jesus has done, what Jesus has done, uh, how, how Jesus has done this. And now he's spreading this message, not in just one Jerusalem or, or, or one area. He's actually spreading this message throughout all the world. Whenever Jesus was here, he was always in the place of the Jews. He was always around Jews, uh, those areas, and that's where he was. But when the Holy Spirit has come, now the message of Christ has been spread across throughout the world. Throughout the world, it's gone from today you and I actually hearing this because the Holy Spirit is here. And because of the Holy Spirit, we have been, people have been moved through and the Holy Spirit has used people to go out and stretch forth this measure, measure, message throughout all the world. And that is why we can actually acknowledge the ministry work of the Holy Spirit and start understanding that He is with us. So that is so vital today to understand, you know, the work of, and, and not to put against and say, you know what, or the work of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is lower than the ministry work of Jesus because it is not. In regards, both are in given the same authority. Both have been given the same power. The name of Jesus has been risen up, but it's the work of the Holy Spirit to reveal that name to us. And that's what he's doing. Okay, so there are three things that, and we're going to read here. Three things that is what we call uh, what the, uh, if, if I were to say, what would the job description of the Holy Spirit would be. Okay, so there are three things. Let's read here. Um, not too far. John chapter 16 and let's read from verse 8. Not too far. Just a few scriptures up. And from verse 8 and let's read on. And when he has come, okay, this is the first thing he will do. He will convict the world of sin. He will convict the world of sin. So here we come to understand the first thing that needs to understand is that he, the Holy Spirit will come to the world. That means those who do not believe in Jesus, those who do not have an understanding of Jesus. The world is enmity against, uh, against God, against his kingdom. So the world is the, the world way of thinking, the world view that we say. That is the thinking and the approach. And the Holy Spirit has come to convict that world view, the people who are following that world view, of their sin. That means of their failure to recognize their need for a savior. The Holy Spirit is supposed to only convict them. See, the world judges people and, and that's how they operate because they will continue to judge people on their sin instead of realizing that they have no understanding of sin. They have no, uh, no overcoming of sin because they are not saved. So we are trying to change in a lot of times. Even church is mistaken to do this a lot of times. We are trying to change a person's actions without changing his inside nature. When the Holy Spirit has come, he has taught and come out to say, your nature is failing you. Who you are on the inside is failing you. You can't do it on your own. You need a savior. That's the sin that the world has been convicted of. Their sin is that they need, they, they are rejecting Jesus. And as long as they reject Jesus, as long as they reject the nature. So what the Holy Spirit needs to do first and foremost is to reveal to people they are actually of the nature of the devil. They have to come to the acceptance that you know what? What I am doing, the things that I have been doing, actually are the nature in me is bad. That means my root core is bad. It's, it, it's corrupted. I need a change on the root core. And that's the sin that the Holy Spirit has come to convict of the people. Not just some, some, some things that you see as fruits coming out of the tree. No, those things will, will automatically change if you change the root. And that's what the Holy Spirit understands. And that's what he's doing. He's convicting the world of the sin is that they need a change in their life because their nature is bound to sin. They are slaves to sin. And in reality, they, what, the, what the word of God says is they are the, of their father. That means they have been convicted as much as now if they do not believe on the name of Jesus, if they do not come to the acceptance of Jesus Christ as their Lord, God and Savior, what will happen to them is the exactly same thing that would happen to Satan. Satan is going to be thrown into the pit of fire. He's going to be judged and he has already been judged in many ways, but he's going to be thrown in. And the same judgment that would come on him would become on anyone who is under him. So the Holy Spirit has come to tell people, if you don't want this path, this path is there. This is where you are actually going. You, you want to change away from this path. There is something that you need to do. Okay, so what happens? The second part is, we're going to verse 9. 
verse uh, verse 8 okay and he come he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness over righteousness that means of their need for righteousness that means he would convict people of their need of a savior that they that they are going to be that they that the, the sin of rejecting Jesus Christ is going to continue in their life unless and until they accept their need for righteousness, that they need someone or something to make them right with God. Because that is the only way their nature is going to change. That is the only way uh, things are going to change in life. Okay, and that's what he does. So what does the Holy Spirit do in that regard? He comes and tells people of a savior. He tells people and convicts them and shows them of a savior whose name is Jesus, who died on the cross for their sins. See, most people say this and they would say, you know, oh, I was saved in church. You are not actually saved in church. Or oh, 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 I was saved in a conference. You are not actually saved in a place. Okay, understand this. The place and the people and the area all are being used by the Holy Spirit to move across and do what He needs to be done. Those are just little avenues. But the conviction of your need for Christ comes through only through the Holy Spirit. It's only through Him convicting you in your life that you would actually in that moment would start accepting because your heart is open. You will start accepting and receiving this message of your need for righteousness. And that's the only moment you would realize because in reality, the worldview is so opposite and against God that the worldview would tell you, how can you be saved if you just accept someone else taking your sin for you? See, the worldview will go against this knowledge. It's only a convicting <laughs> conviction in your heart, which the Holy Spirit does, that allows you to understand, you know what, this is truth. This is what I really need. This is the life that I want. This is what God is actually speaking. This is life itself. This is truth. And then and only then will you start accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord. See, words are many. There are many words spoken by many people and many things are spoken. But the conviction is the truth that you need. See, sometimes we want to be the Holy Spirit for people. You know, but we don't make a great Holy Spirit. We are great vessels for the Holy Spirit, but we don't himself make the Holy Spirit to do the convicting because once we start convicting people, we'll start judging them, putting them down and condemning them and not realizing to do what needs to be done as well. Okay. So then next one, next one, he says, and remember this, when he says about righteousness, uh, he talks about the need for the change in your nature because he is going to change that nature that is destroying you and give you a new nature. Okay. And then he goes on, he says he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin. This is verse 9, it's important. It says, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. He is here Holy Spirit is revealing to the people and that is what he's doing. He's revealing to the people that the ruler of this world, Satan, has been judged. He no longer has the authority. He no longer has the power. He has no longer the ability to come and overrule you. But... You have a choice. You have a choice to under, fall under his rulership and continue to do so because he is judged and that's the judgment coming upon him. But if you will continue to be in that same scenario, if you will continue to say, put it this way, if you reject Christ Jesus as your Lord, God and Savior, the only sin that you will always miss about is this one thing. There is only one sin that God is looking to today is will you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord God and Savior and that sin will lead you straight to the judgment path of Satan and he will put you on that crossroad and that's what the Holy Spirit will show you is that if you will not receive Jesus Christ this is the judgment that is coming to you see most people are afraid of the judgment but they but they think oh you know what the judgment is coming but to those who are in Jesus Christ, there is nothing to fear of judgment. There is nothing because the Holy Spirit's work is towards, towards the world, those who have rejected. See, we have so assumed that the work of the Holy Spirit in this three regards, in the ministerial work, is towards the church. We, we continue to say, oh, he's convicting people in church of their sin. 
That is not what he's doing, okay? He's convicting of the people in church of their righteousness, of who they are in Christ Jesus. He is not convicting them of judgment. He's not trying to put them down. See, he's not breaking down his own body of whom he has called his my very own, the very temple that he has made. He is not breaking down. He has set us apart. He has settled it as you know what? He has revealed to people that this is the very truth that by Jesus Christ you have been made cleansed well, you have been settled, you have the righteousness of God, there is no judgment coming against you. Okay, so this is what is important is that we understand this, we've learned this, you know, and I just want you to go to scripture here and understand this. Look at John chapter 1 and verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. Not too far. We're in the book of John today. John chapter 1 and verse 12. Listen to this. And, and he says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name. Okay? So here comes the Holy Spirit. And he tells us, To those who have accepted, to those who have believed on the name, he has given the right to be called a child of God. Someone who is given the right to be called a child of God has to have the nature of God in him. And so in reality, what it's saying is that to those who have believed in God, who have believed in Jesus Christ, those who have been imparted with the nature of God himself. Their old nature has been taken away and now a new nature has been put. So, so in reality, we, we know this and understand, you know, all of these things have happened to us and we must start believing these truths, okay? So why is that? Because why I say this? Because in so many places, so many times, we see, uh, we see the Holy Spirit get a bad rap, what we say, a bad reputation of, of saying that, you know, he, he's the one, you don't want the Holy Spirit here because he's going to convict people of sin, he's going to do... You have no understanding of the ministerial work of the power of the Holy Spirit. You and I cannot do what the Holy Spirit is going to do. You and I need the Holy Spirit present within us, present with us throughout all our churches, everywhere we go. Because without Him, there is no ministerial work to do. Without Him, there is nothing to preach. Without Him, there is no power. Without Him, there is no ability. Without Him, there is no direction. What we are preaching today can only come through availing the results, the, 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 the message that is portrayed, the results that we are looking for, for people to come and understand the word of God can only come through the Holy Spirit. And that's who we need in our life. That is why it is most important that we start understanding who He is, taking about His understanding. Don't be people who say, you know, this Holy Spirit is too hard. No, no, He is not too hard. He has given up Himself. He has shown and revealed Himself. And all you need to do is keep on talking to Him, keep on believing, and the Word that is with you will be able, alive to you and real to you. I hope you've learned something here tonight. Uh, uh, we go, we're going to continue this, uh, uh, talking about the Holy Spirit. I hope you're here with me next time when we talk about it. A and start understanding much more. See, you know, take time to learn and understand. See, in this short period of time, we can only give you so much. But it is a lifestyle of learning from the Word of God, the Bible, that we can continue to study and understand what God is speaking to us, what He wants us to understand, and how much He wants us to come alive in Him. With that, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us. We trust you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We know you are good, and we thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord, for your faithfulness in every day of our life, Father. Thank you for being a healer, provider, and who you really are. May we be revealed by more of you, Lord. May we have more understanding of you, who you really are. May we have a conscious idea of the Holy Spirit. May we have a revelation of your word through us, Father. We thank you, Father, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I hope you really learned something here tonight. Until next time, remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. Bye-bye. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jcln.org or you can like our Facebook page, Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries, to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram, JCLMPG. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel, JCLMPG, to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry.